Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing solar power for crypto mining. I'll be covering every piece of information needed for you guys to set up your own solar power for mining. So since the Ethereum merge, there's only one option to stay profitable when mining. This is through free electricity or if you have extremely low electricity costs of around 0.04 kilowatts per hour. So it's either you have free electricity via your circumstances or you have some form of renewable energy. Obviously there are options of wind and water power, but solar is the most readily available, so we'll focus on this form of renewable energy in this video. Now if anything in the video confuses you, then head over to the Discord and I'll try to explain further if you have any questions that need to be answered. The link for that is in the description below. So the first step before buying anything is to calculate how much energy your mining rig takes up. There are many ways to do this and the most obvious is looking in the miner. Most miners will display the average watts used. As you can see in the screenshot, it shows an average of 340 watts. The only problem is that this is only the amount of power used by the graphics cards and not the whole PC. There are a lot of programs which you can download that give you the power draw for your whole PC. It's normally around 100 watts more than displayed in the miner. However, there's still a problem as the power supply you're using will have a certain efficiency, which means it has a slippage amount of power it can allow for. So the only real way to get a power draw is by using a watt meter in your plug socket. These record the full amount of power being drawn at the wall. It won't differ too much from the programs you can download. So if you want to be really precise, then you can buy a watt meter or you can have less precise readings from these watt reading programs on your computer. We are just going to use a round number for our example. So let's say our rig takes up 800 watts of power overall. This means every day it takes up 19.2 kilowatts. So this is 0 0.8, which is the watts used per hour, times by 24 hours. So this means that it takes up 19.2 kilowatts per year. So if we times the 19.2 kilowatts by 365 days, it gives us a figure of 6,835 kilowatts per year. Now, personally, when it comes to solar power mining, I would be looking at CPU mining as opposed to GPU mining, just because CPU mining takes up less energy and you can buy a smaller amount of solar panels to keep the mining rig running. So now we have the watts calculated, we need to figure out how many solar panels to buy. Now solar panels work in a strange measurement as you would think a 800 watt panel would produce 800 watts. But that's not true because at certain times in the day, you won't be able to generate that amount of power. Solar panels are measured in kilowatts peak, which means at the peak power generation, it can generate that amount of power. For example, a four kilowatt peak set will only be able to generate four kilowatts at 12 o'clock in the day when the sun is at its highest. So typically, one kilowatt peak will generate around 1,000 kilowatts per year. Now, we did mention that our made-up rig would also need 6,835 kilowatts per year, which means we'd need to get a set of solar panels that equals 6.8 kilowatt peak. This would give us around the amount of kilowatts we needed per year to run this mining rig 24-7. Now there are two options here, either you want to run your rig 24-7 or you want to run it when the sun is out. If you're running your rig 24-7 then you need the full 6.8 kilowatt per unit. However if you only want to run it when the sun is out then you can take this number and half it to 3.4 kilowatt peak. I would do this if you don't have the money to buy a lot of solar right now and then upgrade it to the full set when you start making money. Now the setup for solar panels is very easy and the different options I talked about require two different setups. So if you're choosing to do the half method when the sun is only out, then that's a very simple way of doing it. First, you need to choose your kit size. Once you have that, you'll need to decide either to put them on your roof or you can install them in your garden if you have enough space. If you install them on your roof, then you don't really have much choice of the angle of the panels, which is very important when you want the sun to hit directly at the angle that generates the most power. The best angle depends on where you live in the world. In the northern hemisphere, you want to have your angle set around 45 degrees in the winter, and as it turns into summer, that angle should change to 30 degrees, just because the sun is higher or lower depending on the season. If you're in the southern hemisphere, then it's the opposite way around. Then you want to either manually rotate your panels to follow the sun, or some panels come with a motor which will follow the sun for you. Once you set up the installation, you need to now connect it to your house's grid. As I said, you're choosing the half option, all you need to do is get an inverter for the power. All power generated from solar is DC, but your house runs on AC power. So this inverter will convert DC to AC, and then you can connect your house to the grid via your energy box. Now this part is a bit daunting for some people if you're not completely sure. 
then you should probably ask an electrician to see what to do in terms of your meter box. Many people have different types of fuse boxes for their houses, so it could be different depending on where you live. Now when it comes to the full power option, you need a battery to store excess energy that can be used after the sun goes down and the panels aren't generating any energy. To do this, you need to put a battery plus the inverter in your setup. So it's the same as the step above, but all you need to do is put a battery between the panels and the inverter. This battery will then charge using the excess energy and allow for 24 seven power. The capacity of the battery will be half of the power needed to run the rig per day. So for our example, our rig takes up 19.2 kilowatts per day. So the battery would need to store around half of that to be released at night. Just to be safe, you want it slightly larger than that amount. So for our example rig, we'd take 10 kilowatt batteries because this is more than half of 19.2 kilowatts. As I said before, if you don't know how to plug it into your house grid, then you could give an electrician a call and they can advise you on the installation. The location that you live will also affect how much power each panel can generate. Sunny places will obviously produce more output, but as a generalization, any place that has over 200 days of sun would be very good. Places like Texas or the south of Spain have these number of sun days. So if you're closer to the equator, then you'll be able to generate more power around the year. To put that into perspective, countries like the UK, Norway and Sweden have an average of around 85 days of sun. This amount of sun will have less power generated over the year. So typically, if you have over 100 days of sun, then I would consider getting solar power for your mining rigs. Now, the last thing we need to cover is the price of setting up the solar panel. Remember that even if mining doesn't pan out, there will still be use for solar panels in the future as energy prices are increasing in this economy and solar power could offset some of these high prices. So once you've figured out how much kilowatts your rig uses every year, we can start to buy. I'm just gonna be looking at the cost of one kilowatt peak panel and then you can scale that to however many kilowatts. Remember that one kilowatt peak equals roughly around 1000 kilowatts per year. So without the battery, you are looking at around $700 per one kilowatt peak. This doesn't include the battery. If you wanna buy a battery, then it's gonna cost around $1,000, which is very expensive in comparison just to the normal panels. The reason that the price of solar is so expensive is because of these increasing energy prices around the world. To pay this off, you'd need a rig that brings in around $6 per day for a whole year. After that, it would all be profit. So if you've learned more about solar mining, then leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also comment down below what type of videos you want to see next and in the future.